Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll extract a component from a Blazor WebAssembly app, stuff it into the overhead compartment we call a Razor Component Library, wrap it up as a NuGet package, and share it on NuGet. And that's coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. All right, let's get going. I've created a brand new WebAssembly a Blazor application called Enumerate Devices App. All right, it's just pure WebAssembly. There's no server, nothing like that. Starting from scratch, the first thing we're going to do is add a JavaScript uh, file with code that enumerates media devices. So these are audio inputs, like microphones, audio outputs, speakers, headphones, and video inputs, webcams. All we need to do is get a list of these objects with you know, their names and their device IDs and all that stuff, and just put them in lists. And then we'll use some UI to show them in drop-down boxes, okay? So the first thing we'll do is go to the web root of this project and we'll add a JavaScript file. Woohoo! And it will be called media device lib. Now, I went through this code in the JavaScript interop uh, episode. Get user media is something that you need to call first, but sometimes it hangs. Doesn't always work. So I'm taking two approaches. And if it hangs, by the way, you're done. Nothing, nothing comes back. So I'm taking the approach of going get user media, then enumerate devices. And then another, uh, in another, you know, just down from that, I'm doing enumerate devices without get user media. So one of these is bound to work. This is just from pure experience, folks. Uh, I don't understand this stuff. I just try to make it work. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah of course you do. Uh, all right. So now we have our JavaScript. Let's add a link to it in the index.html file. So there's our script tag right there that basically links to media device lib.js. And now we can create a C-sharp class for the model for these media devices. And this is called browser media device. There it is. Now you might notice the camel casing here. Why? The reason that we have to do this is the object that comes back from JavaScript, the fields on that object are camel cased. So they have to match if you're going to deserialize this properly. Now let's get to our component. We're going to add it to the shared folder. And it's called Media Device Enumerator. And it has exactly one line of code, which isn't really code, just to inject the runtime. And where's the rest of it? Well, it doesn't need any UI, but we do have a code behind file a C-sharp file for the code. Let's add that now. Uh, media device enumerator.razor.cs. And there's that. So this is what calls into the JavaScript, and we're going to expose these calls through a component, right? We've got parameters. Those parameters are lists of browser media device, one for audio inputs, one for audio outputs, one for video inputs. We've also got an event callback for status change, which we can fire off when anything changes, whenever we get some new information. So we've got an enumerate devices async method that's public. So this is what we call when we want to enumerate the devices. And that calls into JavaScript. And now we have two JS invocables, one when device status change, so JavaScript calls us whenever there's an error or something like that, device status change passes the error string. And then we just bubble that up to whoever's calling us. And now we have another one that uh, is available devices that passes this object array of devices. Now, what is that object array? Well, it's JavaScript objects, okay? So you need to get the string representation and then deserialize. So check it out. We're going to deserialize a browser media device for each one of these devices in the object. And now we get to look at those properties. Kind is going to be audio input, audio output, or video input, right? So we're doing a little, 
uh, switcheroo based on that. And then we're just making sure it's not null, making sure the label is not empty and the device ID is not empty, and then we'll add it to our list. When we're done, we're going to raise the event uh, status change with devices found. Okay, now let's take over the index page and put some UI in here. Starting with this, get devices. This is a method that we call from a button click that uh, calls media device enumerator enumerate devices. This is actually this, which is a media device enumerator. It's the same name, but here's where we get it. When we create a media device enumerator, we grab a reference to it with the at ref, right? And now we have our media device enumerator reference, so we can make calls into that. We are also passing as parameters our lists and hooking status changed to our device status changed method. And then all we do is invoke state as changed and everything should be fine. Check it out. Um, we passed our lists as parameters. So whenever things change, those lists get filled. So now all we have to do is display the lists and we're using select and option for that. Let's check it out. Okay, now the first time you run this, you can see I got my enumerate media devices button there. First time you run this, it's actually not gonna return anything. However, it's gonna say devices found and it wants us to grant permission to use the camera and the microphone. So because of that, we missed our opportunity to get the objects. And I've done this a million ways, um, a million tried permutations, and it, it's my opinion that you can't hook that in the browser. You just have to push the button again. There isn't any way to say, hey, if it comes back null or whatever, like as soon as you try to access one of those objects, um, that th the browser takes over, that comes up, and then if you allow it, then the next time you go in to grab the devices, it all works. So yeah, I have a lot of devices. These are my input devices, my output devices, and my video input devices. Yep, that's just the way it goes. All right, so that is the self-contained WebAssembly application. Now let's start moving it out into another project. So we're going to add to this solution a new project. And it will be a Razor class library. We're going to call it, guess what? Media device lib. Same as our JavaScript file. Now when you create one of these projects, by default you get a whole bunch of files in here right, just for demonstration purposes, because, get this, when you package up a Razor class library, you can put static assets in here. Here's a graphics file, here's a JavaScript file, here's a style sheet. If you just create a www root folder, which is there automatically, and you add those in, they come with the package. It's really great, but we don't need any of these. So we're going to delete everything except for imports razor. We want to keep that. But if you're interested, you know, in the just the default, you can read through those things and just to, to see what they're doing. Okay. So the first thing let's do is steal this media device live JS from our application. I'm just going to drag it and drop it down in there. Great. Awesome. Now what else? Do we steal everything else? Well, yeah, kind of, but the namespace is going to change, right? So we could steal this guy, Media Device Enumerator Razor, but we have to change the namespace to Media Device Lib. And the same with Browser Media Device. We can grab that, copy but the namespace is now going to be media device lib. Lastly, we need to go to imports razor here in the component and add uh, Microsoft JS interop. Now this is all ready to go. So how do we access this from our application? Well, first let's 
delete our local resources, delete the JavaScript file, delete the component, and delete browser media devices. And then we're going to right click on the project and add a project reference to our Razor class library, media device lib. There it is. Go to imports user and add using media device lib. Finally, go to index HTML and we are no longer using media device lib JS, but instead we are using underscore content slash media device lib slash media device lib dot js so underscore content means uh, this is from shared components or components that you have references to media device lib is the library and there you go media device lib js oh my god could it possibly be that easy is this going to run place your bets and boom there it is folks all right, so all we've done now is extracted out all the stuff that did the media device enumeration and moved it into a Razor class library where now we can do the next step, which is publish it to NuGet. Yes, I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch right now. Okay. I have included in the sample code a text file, and this is in my original Enumerate Devices app project. And this text file is sort of a cheat sheet for uh, showing you how to create a NuGet package, how to go to NuGet and create an API key, and then use that API key to publish the package to NuGet. So we're going to do all of that. Uh, the first thing we need to do is generate a package. So I'm going to go down to my media device lib project and go to properties and click on package. Now there's some interesting stuff here, but there's a minimum amount of data that you need to fill in. We're going to select this, generate new get package on build. We're going to put in a package ID. The version can be 100. Uh, we're going to set the authors, the company, the product, the description, the copyright. That's pretty much the basic stuff that you need to put in here. So my product name is going to be App Phoenix Blazor Media Device Lib. Okay. Authors, Carl Franklin. And notice how it automatically changes the company to Carl Franklin, but it's going to be App V Next. And here's my product again, App V Next Blazor Media Device Lib. And my description will be Blazor component to enumerate audio and video devices. Copyright 2002 by App V Next. All right, pretty much that's it. Save it. And now, because we checked off generate NuGet package on build. Let's just build it. But first, we're going to set this to release. All right, we're going to set our build mode to release. And then just go ahead and build it. Now I'm opening a console window in this directory right here where a media uh, device lib is. And you can see I've got all of my stuff right there. I'm going to go into the bin directory and then into the release folder. Take a look. There is my NuGet package right there. Now before I can publish that to NuGet, I need an API key, which means I need a NuGet account. So once you've created your NuGet account, like I have got mine app next right here, you're going to go to API keys and create a new key. So I'm going to set the key name to the same as my component just to make it easier. I'm going to push new packages and package versions. I'm going to set the glob pattern to asterisk. It allows you to replace any sequence of characters. So this is all packages. 
and ignore this stuff. This is what I was working on before I did this video. So we'll create our API key. There it is. Now I'm just going to copy that into the clipboard. And I'm going to keep that around in a secret place. Now back in my notes file, I've got a string here that is what I can execute at the command line where I am to publish this NuGet package. So let's paste it right here. And I'm going to replace the package name. And I'll replace my API key with my API key that I have kept in a secret place. And execute. All right, my package was pushed. Now let's go wait for it to become available. Go back to NuGet. I'm going to go to Manage Packages. And you can see that I've got unlisted packages here. Two of them were the ones that I was working on before. And the third one is this new one that I just created. So now you wait until NuGet emails you that the package has been published. It could take up to an hour, but in my experience, 10 minutes, something like that. So through the magic of video editing, let's fast forward in time. All right, so we've got one published package now. It's only a few minutes later. There it is. I will click on that, and guess what? I can copy my install package command, and guess what we're going to do with it next? You got it. We're going to create a new project. All right, so I've created a new WebAssembly project here in the same solution called Enumerate Devices App NuGet. Brand new. Now, what I want to do is go to the Package Manager console and make sure I have selected the right project here, the NuGet project, and I'll install our NuGet package. Okay, there it is. Uh, now the only thing we have to do is add to our index.html a link to the correct JavaScript library. And since the project name uh, is AppVenex Blazor Media Device Lib, that is the directory under underscore content where we're going to find Media Device Lib JS. Okay, now I'm going to add media device lib using statement to my imports. And we'll go take over the index page the way we did before with the same exact code. There it is. Final step, very important. Let's make sure we set this as our startup project. And... Yes! Whoa, whoa! That pretty much says it all. Back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, Microsoft has given us a real gift. They've created a viable platform for reusable web components and made it drop dead easy for conductors like me to share our work with all the passengers, all the passengers. even you. You know, as if C Sharp in the browser wasn't good enough, sharing components makes Blazor even better. Thanks, Microsoft. Now, Let's talk about my Azure bill. No? Oh, well. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train.